how to end this story of empire. Well, I'm now in Tilbury, east of London, and this was the place where, in 1948, 500 young Jamaicans arrived here in Britain on the SS Empire Windrush, with the intention of settling here in what they called the mother country. And this was a defining moment in our history, not just because it marks the start of mass immigration into this country, but because, if you like, this was the moment when the story of empire comes full circle. No longer were Brits heading out to carve out an empire abroad. Now the citizens of that empire were coming here. And in the 20 years that followed the arrival of the Windrush, immigrants arrived here from Pakistan, from India, from Uganda, Kenya, from Hong Kong, Ceylon, so many places. And Britain was transformed into a multicultural society, the modern Britain we know today. It was these decades of mass immigration after the Second World War that saw the end of the British Empire, as one nation after another demanded and was granted independence. The war had left us broke, unable to afford the cost of empire. But more than that, we knew in our heart of hearts the right of people to decide their own fate outweighed our right to stay. And so, down came the Union Jack. I think, to an extent, the way the empire came to an end did us credit. The time and expense spent working alongside the colonies, preparing them for independence. And the proof of that new spirit of cooperation came when one colony after another chose not to cut the tie completely, but rather to remain in what's called to this day the British Commonwealth of Nations, united in trade, in a common heritage, but more than that, in friendship. And our status now as a tolerant, multicultural society, connected to countries across the globe in bonds of friendship, that's the one legacy of the empire of which we can be proud.